Hello, Ricardo. Hello, Mohamed. Are you hearing me? Yes, clear. And, and now, are you seeing my screen? Yes, perfect. Everything is uh, OK? Yeah. OK. So uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you for being here, listening to me, presenting the core concept of adaptive case sharing. I think, unfortunately, I will not have too much time to cover all what I have to cover with this uh, feature. But I will try to do my best to share with you what I think is most useful for our day-to-day -day work. Uh, Ricardo, if any problem, uh, you can uh, ping me on WhatsApp or... Uh, okay? Yeah, yeah, sure. I will just mute myself for now. And uh, if everything goes wrong, I will let you okay. know. A few words about uh, me. My name is Mohamed Houri. I have a PhD in fluid mechanics, which is something had, had, to, had nothing to do with the Oracle. I am an Oracle ace since uh, five years, I think. I blog in uh, WordPress. I tweet using uh, this handle. And I uh, co authored three chapters of this book, Adaptive Cursor Sharing, Chapter 4, Stabilizing Query Performance Using uh, SQL Plan Management, and Chapter 6, DDL Optimization Tips, Techniques, and Tricks. Okay. Uh, we all know, uh, DBA and developer, the importance of the usage of bind variable uh, for the availability, scalability, and security of uh, transactional database. Uh, this is why I am always advising people to use bind variable, uh, particularly for the OLTP uh, databases. However, also bind variable are vital and crucial for transactional database. They nevertheless introduce a performance threat. Imagine two bind variable, two different bind variable value processing different amount of rows. At the end of the, of the day, they will share the same execution plan, which is not always good from the performance point of view. And I think this is why Oracle has implemented the adaptive cursor sharing feature. So think about the adaptive cursor sharing as a feature implemented to make the collaboration between bind variable and optimal execution plan as good as possible, OK? But you think, you, I, I think you are aware that adaptive cursor sharing will not work or kick in for any executed query. It needs to have a cursor or query need to fulfill some condition before being eligible to uh, adaptive case of sharing. So the first step of this agenda is to look at what are those prerequisites. To be elected for adaptive case of sharing, a cursor needs to use bind sensitive, to be bind sensitive. And to be bind sensitive, of course, it need, needs to use bind variable, either directly or through setting uh, the case of sharing parameter to false. Okay. The bind sensitive property has been externalized in the V$ SQL view as shown in the current slide. I know three cases under which a cursor can be marked bind sensitive. The first one is when we use range predicate, range predicate like here, inequality predicate on a column having simple statistics, okay? Branch predicate on the column having simple statistic will mark the underlying cursor bind sensitive. The second condition is, is when we use an equality predicate on a column having a histogram, okay? Equality predicate on a column having histogram will mark the underlying cursor 
bite sensitive. And the last one is when we use a predicate part, which is a partition key. Uh, this column N2, when it is a partition key of a partition table, the underlying cursor will be marked bind sensitive. Three simple uh, condition, range predicate with simple statistic, equality predicate with a histogram, and a predicate part involving the partition key. I'm going to uh, demonstrate this very quickly. The first case, I am using a simple table, TACS, with two columns, huh? purging the shared pool, setting the cursor shared to false, and collecting statistics without histogram, without histogram, with the method op for all column size one. And you see the N, the N2 column of this table has the following distribution, uh, which is a skewed uh, value. And there is no histogram on the column N2. And now I run a simple query with an inequality predicate. An inequality predicate. Uh, let's see the underlying cursor. The underlying cursor is this one, and it is using a table access full. But let's see uh, the, the underlying cursor here is already marked bind sensitive. Uh, you see bind sensitive, yes. So very simple. No statistic on uh, column N2. You use a range predicate. Your cursor will be marked bind sensitive. OK? But if I change slightly the uh, initial query with the branch predicate to an equality predicate, you will see that the underlying cursor, uh, this one, will not be market bind sensitive. OK? So I repeat, first case, no histogram, only bind variable. Uh, I'm using here bind variable thanks to the cursor chain set to false. Uh, an equality predicate will mark cursor bind sensitive. Okay, first case. Let's see the second case, which concern an equality predicate. Exactly the same setup. Purge the shared pool, set cursor chain to force, but collect statistic with histogram here for all column size Q only. And you see, we have now a frequency histogram on the column N2. Now I'm going to run the query with an equality predicate. And you will see that the underlying cursor here is, has been marked bind sensitive. Is bind sensitive? Yes. So second case, simple. You have an equality predicate, but the predicate has a histogram. Then the underlying cursor will be marked bind sensitive. OK. Uh, the third case, the same setup, but this time I use a partition table uh, without collecting statistics. Okay, you see, no, no, histo without collecting histogram, uh, you see that there is no uh, histogram on the column N2. And now I ran an equality predicate an equality predicate on the column N2 without histogram. But this time, the column N2 is, is a partition key of a partition table. And this is why we have partition rent single. Uh, you see, partition rent single. So the underlying cursor will be marked bind sensitive. Is bind sensitive? Yes. So third case, a simple case, you have a predicate part which involves a partition key, then your cursor will mark it be will be marked by it sensitive. Okay. So now that our cursor has been marked by insensitive, what happens? This is what uh, we are going to see in the second part of the agenda which is the warm-up period. 
Now that the, that the cursor is market bind sensitive, all its future execution will be monitored. The goal of this monitoring phase is to decide when it is time to mark the cursor bind aware. And as long as a cursor is not marked by the web, adaptive cursor sharing will not kick in. The time it will take for the cursor to switch from bind sensitive to bind the web is known as the warm up period. The bind wear property has also been externalized in the V$ sequence view as shown in the current slide. So how do you think Oracle handles this warm-up period? And for that, it will use the view called the VDollar SQL CS histograms, CS for cursor sharing. This view contain three important columns, child number, the bucket ID, and the count. The child number represents the execution plan used by the query. The count, represents the number of execution done by this child number. And the bucket ID, we have three value for the bucket ID, zero, one, and two. Bucket ID number zero concerns query that process zero between zero and 1,000 rows. While bucket, number, bucket ID number one concerns query that process rows between 1,000 and 1 million. And finally, bucket ID number two concerns execution processing more than 1 million of rows. Okay. So now based on the bucket ID count, Oracle uses three rules to switch a cursor from bind sensitive to bind aware. The First case is when all execution are done at adjacent bucket ID, uh, at bucket ID 0, 1, or 1 and 2. The second case in when, is when execution are done at distant bucket, means 0 and 2. And the last case is when there are execution distributed over all the buckets. 0, 1, and 2. Okay. Let's see now the rule used on the, for the first case. The rule used in this case is very simple. When all execution done, when number of execution done at bucket ID number 1 equal the execution of uh, execution done at bucket ID number zero, then the next execution will mark the cursor by the web and compile a new execution plan. Okay. Demonstration. Always the same setup, the same table. Uh, flash the shared pool, gather statistic with histogram, uh, set cursor sharing to force. Uh, you see, I have a frequency histogram. And now I'm going to run this simple query at bucket ID number one. Why bucket ID number one? Because it process more than 1,000 rows, but less than 1 million of rows. Okay, one, two, three execution at bucket ID number one. The underlying cursor is this, and we are we are uh, uh, using the index run scan plan. The cursor is bind sensitive, bind sensitive, but not yet bind aware. Why it is bind sensitive? I repeat, frequency histogram equality predicate. Okay, let's now run. Uh, yes, as I explained in the previous uh, slide, we I executed uh, three times execution at bucket ID number one. You see the count 
of Beckett ID number one in the Vedol RCS histogram has been incremented to three. Three execution count equal three. Now I'm going to run the same query three times at Beckett ID number two. One, two, and three. Why Beckett and the number two? Because I am processing more than more than uh, one million of rows. After three execution at the extreme byte variable value, now you see we are still sharing the wrong execution plan. The wrong, at least for this bind variable, which which normally should uh, use a full table scan. And you see that, as explained also in the previous section, I ran the query three times at bucket ID number two. You see the count of bucket ID number two has been incremented three times. But according to the rule of the first case, uh, one and two are adjacent bucket, and there is no execution done at the bucket number zero. But the count of bucket ID number one is equal to the count of bucket ID number two, then the next execution work will normally mark a cursor binder where and op optimize a full table scan. Do you think it will do it? Yes, it did. You see, child number one and table access full. Why? Because child number one cursor is marked by the word, while child number zero was bind sensitive but not bind the word. Child number one is both bind sensitive and bind, and bind the word. Okay. What about the second case? When execution are done at distant bucket, it means zero and two. In this case, the rule is also simple. When the execution done at bucket ID number two equals, say, the count of execution done at bucket ID number zero divided by three, then the next execution will mark the cursor binder word and compile a new execution plan. Okay. Let's demo this. The same setup as always. Purge the shared pool, set cursor share and force, collect histogram, and run the query 10 times at bucket ID number zero. Why bucket and number zero? Because I am processing less than 1,000 of rows, 10 times. And now execute the same query four times at bucket ID number two. Why bucket ID number two? Because I am processing more than one million of rows. Still, after all those execution, we are sharing the index rent scan plan with child number zero. And the cursor is bind sensitive, but not yet bind word. As explained in the previous section, you see we have 10 execution at bucket ID number zero and four execution at bucket ID number two, two distant bucket, and no execution at the other bucket. So now we reach the rule. The number of execution at bucket number two equal the number of execution at bucket number zero, 10 divided by three, four equal four. So the next execution will normally mark a cursor by the word and compile a full table scan. Yes, it did. Child number one, and table access full. Why? Because child number one, uh, child number one is binder sensitive and binder aware. Okay, while child number zero uh, was bind sensitive, 
and not bind where. And all those execution done at that child number zero corresponds to the warm-up period. Okay. Now the last case, when there are uh, execution done at all buckets ID. In this case, I spent, I think too much time trying to reverse engineer the rule used by Oracle to mark a cursor by the word. And have I ended up there by implementing the following function. Uh, uh, the following function, if you give it uh, a three parameter, the count of bucket ID number zero, the count of the execution done at bucket number, number one, and execution done at bucket ID number two, it will tell you whether the next execution will mark a cursor by the word, yes, or no. Okay. Let's see the demo. Always the same setup. Uh, Purge the chat pool, set cursor chain to force, collect statistic with histogram. We have a frequency histogram here. And run 10 times the same query at bucket ID number zero. Why bucket ID number zero? Because I am processing less than 1000 rows. Then one execution at bucket ID number one. Why bucket and number one? Because I'm processing more than 1,000 rows, but, but less than 1 million of rows. And two times at the extreme bind variable value, uh, it means at bucket ID number two, one and two. You see, after all those execution, we are still sharing the child number zero uh, with the index runs can't map. And our cursor, is bind sensitive, but not by the where. Okay. And 10 execution at bucket ID number zero. We have count bucket ID number zero incremented to 10. One execution at bucket ID number one, we have count incremented to one. And finally, two execution at bucket ID number two we have count of bucket ID number two equal to two. If we run the function, uh, this function with this combination of execution, 10, one, two, it says that the next execution will not mark a cursor by the word, and it will still continue sharing the same execution plan. Do you think? Ah, yes, we are still sharing this child number zero, uh, despite we run for the extreme bind variable value, which normally should uh, share, uh, use the full table scan. Why? Because uh, uh, now that we have run the third time, we see bucket ID number three, has been incremented to three, from two to three. And what about the next execution with this picture? 10, one, and three. 10, one, and three. It looks like the next execution will mark cursor bind where and optimize a new execution plan using the full table scan. Let's see. Yes, it did. Child number one and Table access full. Okay. And this is because finally the child cursor number one has been marked by the word. Okay. So now this, the third step of uh, the presentation, which concerns the 
uh, when adaptive cluster sharing stepped down in favor of extended cluster sharing. Uh, to summarize, we see now that first the query uh, the cursor has to use bind variable to be bind sensitive. And there are three conditions under which a cursor can be market bind sensitive. Once a cursor is market bind sensitive, it goes through a warm up period during which there are a number of combinations of execution uh, and three rules used by Oracle to transit a bind sensitive cursor to a bind aware cursor. But now what happened when a cursor became bind aware? We saw previously that the adaptive cursor sharing is responsible for bringing a cursor from bind sensitive to bind aware. And mainly it uses the VDOLRCL SQL CS histogram, the child number, bucket ID, and the count. But we are going to see that the extended cursor sharing is responsible for giving a bind aware cursor the best execution plan possible for each bind var variable value. And it uses for this a second view, which is called VDOLR SQL CS selectivity. This view exposed here has three important columns, the child number and the low and the high column. How does the extended cursor sharing layer code work? Okay. The extended cursor layer code works as follows. For each execution of a bind aware cursor, extended cursor sharing layer code will get the selectivity cube of the used bind variable. I will explain shortly what is the selectivity cube. Check if this selectivity cube is covered by an existing child cursor, low and high range selectivity stored in VDOLRCS selectivity view. It means it pick at the bind variable value, get its selectivity cube, go to the VDOLRCS selectivity, selectivity, check whether there exists a child number that contain, that have a low and high value that contain the selectivity cube of the picket bind variable value. If yes, it will share this child cursor. If no, however, it will compile a new execution plan and insert a new low high selectivity range in the VDOR CS selectivity view. One important remark, don't confuse the warm up period with the, the, uh, when the cursor became bind aware. The warm-up period, the cursor is not yet bind aware, and it is still sharing the uh, first compiled execution plan. But once the cursor became bind aware, the extended cursor sharing kicks in and will try, depending on the uh, bind variable value selectivity, uh, either share an existing child cursor or compile a new one. There are four types of cursor selectivity cube. Selectivity cube that concern frequency histogram, the one that concern popular hybrid histogram, and the third one that concerned a non-popular hybrid histogram, but having an endpoint number in the histogram tables. And the last one is a cursor selectivity cube for non-captured, non-popular hybrid histogram. If you want to have uh, more details about uh, this, well, I don't have my, uh, my blog open. Okay. Uh, okay, I, I have wrote a, bl a blog article for uh, Redgate uh, software uh, where I explain in details what those 
uh, four type of frequency uh, uh, of histogram R. And you, um, if you want, I can put the link uh, after the, the end of the presentation. OK. I'm not going to demo every type of selectivity cube, but I will concentrate on the frequency histogram, hoping that uh, it will be uh, clear. OK. OK, always the same setup. Don't worry about what uh, you are seeing in the screen. Um, I will summarize. Flush the shared pool, set QSO sharing force, uh, gather statistic with histogram. You see frequency histogram. Ran 19 times at bucket ID number zero. Ran, ran the same query six times at bucket ID number one. Uh, remember why bucket ID number one? Because I am processing 1,000 rows. Five times at bucket ID number two. Uh, verify that after all those execution, cursor is not yet bind aware. And the proof is that we have no rows in the Vedol RCS selectivity. Uh, remember that once the cursor bar became bind, bind aware, there is a row for it in the Vedol RCS selectivity. Check that, of course, cursor is bind sensitive, but not bind aware. We have this picture of execution 19.6.5, uh, still sharing the index range scan plan. And uh, ask our function whether this picture 19, 6, and 5 will mark a cursor by the word. Yes, it will. It looks like it will. So indeed, when we run this query, we have a table full access. Huh? And our cursor is marked bind where bind sensitive and bind where. So far, so, so good. This is what we see, what we saw previously. But now, the, there is one row in the Vedol RCS selectivity having this low and high value. Child number one, uh, child number one, it is the one which is bind sensitive and bind aware, and it has a low and a high value. Okay. Here is how um, Oracle computes the selectivity cube of uh, and two columns. You see, it uses user tab histogram. I use T SES table and N2 column. And for each value of the N and two column, I have a low and a high value. One, 100, 1,000, 10,000, and 1 million. And this, this is what we call the selectivity cube of a frequency of a column having a frequency histogram. OK. Uh, what do you uh, uh, remark when you saw the low and the high value of child number one and this picture? Do you, rem do you remark something? 0 0.82, 0 1.00. 0 0.82, 1.00. The low and the high value of child number one corresponds to the low and the high value of bind variable one million. Why? Because child number one has been optimized for bind variable one million. Uh, it means that uh, the low and the high value of child number one corresponds to the low and the high value of the bind variable 10, uh, 1 million. OK? What happened now if uh, I run the same query, but this time with value bind variable 1? Uh, remember now, cursor is bind aware. At each execution, the extended cursor chain will peak at the bind variable value, get its selectivity cube, 
and check whether this selectivity cube is covered by an existing child number low and high range. Bind variable value one has this selectivity, 00001 and 0001. Obviously, uh, the child number one doesn't contain this selectivity. So if I run the same query with bind variable one, it will optimize a new child number with a new low and high selectivity. You see, indeed, I executed with bind variable one. And now I have a child number two with 0 0.0001 and 0 0.0001, which corresponds to the low and high value of bind variable one. OK? What happened now if I run the same query, but this time with bind variable 10,000? 10,000 here has the selectivity low 0074991 and 091655. Uh, there is obviously no child cursor here uh, covering this low and high range of selectivity cube of bind variable 10,000. So if I run it, if I run the same query with the bind variable 10,000, it will compile a new execution plan a new child number. Indeed, you see child number three has been optimized, okay? But there is something worth emphasizing here. Have you already spotted it or not? See the low and the high value of child number three, which has optimized for bind variable 10,000 and see the low and the high value of uh, the selectivity cube of the bind variable 10,000, 00074 and 0091, 00001 and 009655. The low value of child number one, uh, three is not the low value of uh, selectivity cube of bind variable 10,000. Why? Do you know why? I will tell you. Because when Oracle optimized child number three, here, child number three, here, it realized that it ended up by having the same execution plan as child number two, like child number two. You see, this plan has value, and this, the same plan has value and the current scan and, and the current scan. When it realized that the new child number three is the same as child number two, it automatically canceled child number two. You see, is shareable here of child number two is no. And it kept child number three, but it has enlarged its low and high selectivity by putting the low selectivity of child number two into the low value of child number three so that so that bind variable or selectivity low of high of child number two will be included into that of child number three. Okay? And the last uh, case is what happened if I we run uh, the query now with bind variable 100 here. 100 here. It has 00075 and 00092. And this selectivity is included here. So obviously, if I run the query with bind variable uh, 100, it will share the child number three. Okay? child number three. But before running it, I printed the number of execution done at child number three, uh, one, one execution. If I run with 100, normally, if it share, it will, it will share the child number three, you will see that execution will be incremented to two. Yes, you see? 
because the uh, selectivity cube of bind variable 100 is included into that of into the low and the high value of child number three, uh, Oracle decided to share the child number three uh, and run the query uh, two times. Okay. Almost, we are almost at the end of the presentation. Uh, now I'm going to show you how to cancel ACS because sometimes we need to cancel it. We can cancel adaptive case sharing using uh, locally using the no bind aware hints. We can also change the default value of the two hidden parameter governing the adaptive case sharing and extended case sharing. We can indirectly preempt RCS to kick in by preempting it from peaking at bind variable value uh, simply by uh, setting the hidden parameter of peak it by variable to false. And finally, my preferred way of canceling ACS is to fix the SQL plan, manage, uh, SQL plan management uh, for, to, to, to fix only a single execution plan. But however, this is only valid as from uh, Oracle 12C release 2. Let's demonstrate this. Okay, always the same setup. Briefly, I will show you what I did. Okay, uh, share, flash the shared pool, set to social to force, collect statistic with histogram, drop uh, an SPM if any. You see, I have frequency histogram, execute query 10 times at bucket ID number zero, then at bucket number uh, one, then at, at uh, bucket in number two, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, until I end up by having the following picture in the VDOLAR SQL view, okay? But I am interested only on the two last child number. They are bind aware, bind sensitive, bind sensitive and bind aware and shareable. And now suppose that uh, this, child number is causing you a performance issue and you want to, uh, to fix only this execution plan for any uh, execution of any bind variable. Right? For that, you will fix a SQL plan management, SQL baseline. Okay, I use the load uh, as a plan from QSR cache with the corresponding SQL ID here. And I use the plan hash value that correspond to child number four. You see, we have loaded one plan into the SPM baseline. And now let's run uh, my query here, you see. It, it is using a SQL plan baseline, yeah, so far so good. But what happened behind the scene is this. Remember, child number one and child number four, bind sensitive, bind aware, and shareable. After I have fixed the SPM plan baseline and run a simple query here, what happened? I have only one shareable plan, which is not anymore bind sensitive nor bind aware. And the child number four has been deleted from, uh, from the uh, memory, okay? And I think if you look carefully, also the child number one, which was bind sensitive and bind aware has been deleted, why? Because this child number one, huh, 
which is using the SQL plane management has only one execution. Okay, if, if, if this one has been reused, then I will have uh, two here. Okay, simply put, if you have, um, if you want to cancel ACS uh, because it's switching a multiple execution plan, you choose the best plan you think is, fix a SPM baseline and under the behind the scene, Oracle will cancel uh, ACS by seating the uh, bind sensitive and bind where of the corresponding cursor uh, to know. Okay. So now the last uh, step of the presentation, uh, I want to give you my opinion. Uh, I think by way of conclusion, I would like to say uh, the following about adaptive cursor sharing and extended cursor sharing. Certainly there are situations where uh, adaptive cursor sharing is helping and people very often are not aware at all that their query is performing very well uh, thanks to adaptive cursor sharing. So by default, I think let's uh, adaptive cursor sharing and extended sharing working by default and don't change any parameter. However, when it starts causing performance pain, you should imperatively be able to diagnose this pain and to clearly show its relationship to adaptive cursor sharing. How to do this? I think uh, the following query is a mess to have. You see, simple, very simple query, but very powerful. Let me show you an example. If you look at the left-hand side of the screen, this query is indicating that the application from which I took this query is using adaptive cursor sharing, extensive cursor sharing, and there is no problem here. But if you look at the right-hand side, uh, by the way, it's taken from a real life uh, running system. You see that the first uh, query is dramatically uh, damaging the performance of the uh, application. There are almost 17 million of rows in the Vedol RCS selectivity for, their, for this cursor. Imagine one thing, you have this uh, cursor on the left-hand side, which is bind aware. So at each execution, Oracle will pick at the bind variable, go to the VDLRCS selectivity view, and issue a select, a select on a table for this SQL ID, which contain 17 million of rows. And multiply the, this by the number of execution done by this uh, SQL ID, and you will see that you are uh, that it adaptive uh, extended cursor sharing is really causing a performance issue, and you need in this case to cancel it. And the best way to cancel it, if you are uh, in 12C release two or later, is to fix the SPM plan baseline. But before doing that, to be sure that the non-sharing of execution plan is due to the extended cursor sharing of or ACS. You can use uh, panel folder script non-sharing and it will show you if, uh, if the reason for non-sharing is due to extended, extend, extended cursor sharing, you will see the bind equivalent failure, huh? okay? Bind equivalent failure is when Oracle uses the selectivity cube of the bind variable and fails to find a corresponding ch child cursor in the fatal RC equal selectivity covering with a low and a high range covering the selectivity cube of this bind variable. Okay, and finally, this is the, uh, the uh, adaptive cursor sharing triggering diagram. If you don't use bind variable, forget adaptive cursor sharing. 
If your cursor is not bind sensitive, forget adaptive cursor sharing. Your cursor will become bind sensitive if it use a predicate with histogram or an equality predicate with histogram or range predicate with simple statistic or a partition key. Once it is bind sensitive, if it is not bind aware, then forget RCS. But when it is bind aware, uh, using the three rules we explained, the extended cursor sharing kicks in and, sorry, peaks at the bind variable value, check if its selectivity is between low and high value in the V$RCS selectivity. If found, then share the corresponding plan. If not, then compile a new plan and insert it or update it uh, into the V$RCS selectivity. And by the way, don't forget to always keep an eye, a careful eye on the number of cursor that you can find with this uh, query in the V$RCS selectivity. Okay, thank you. Uh, Ricardo, if any question, then please share. Hello, uh, just a moment, let me see. Okay, we have one question. Yes. Why does Oracle continue to add rows to V$ SQL CS selectivity for each bind variable uh, when the execution plan is probably not different for each new value instead of extending the low uh, high range of the red existing yeah, maybe it's easy for oracle to to uh, because to, yes. <laughs> to set the cursor the cursor to uh, non shareable uh, create a new one and adapt the selectivity low and high instead of uh, keeping the child number 2 uh, for example and updating the the low and the high value. Maybe I think it's the reason for, for which Oracle has decided to create a new child number instead of uh, keeping the, the first one when uh, the two execution plan are identical, I think. Okay, thank you. Uh, there is another one. How does Oracle random byte picking uh, in case of course of sharing equals exact? Sorry, sorry, what? How does Oracle handle bind variable picking in case of cursor sharing equals? When, when it is a, when the cursor a, a, when the cursor is set to exact, it depends on your application whether you are using bind variable or no. If you are not using bind variable, uh, you are using literal. And for each execution, uh, Oracle will pick at this uh, literal value and optimize a new uh, plan. But if you are using bind variable, then it's the same thing as if you are you're setting cursor sharing to false. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, there is another one. Yes. Uh, does uh, using bind aware hint mean means that Oracle will bypass the warm up phases uh, and yes. go directly to ACS phases? Yes. Yes. We remember that uh, at one client using PeopleSoft, uh, and there are uh, 49 streams in PeopleSoft. Each stream uh, was uh, handling different amount of, uh, uh, of rows. And they have uh, a problem that the, between the stream, execution plan are, share, are, share, are uh, shared. Huh? So we, what we did is that uh, for critical query, we added bind aware, and it uh, allows us to avoid this kind of uh, of warm up period and uh, sharing execution plan. Yes, okay. of course. Okay, thank you. Uh, we have another one from uh, Amit Sahoha uh, on YouTube. I yes. hope I said correctly. In today's world, with cloud and autonomous database. How much relevant is the learn about all these deep level stuff? Yeah, good question. I don't know. I don't know whether the autonomous trans trans database, I have no experience uh, uh, about uh, handling performance in uh, autonomous database, at least not yet. I don't know how Oracle will handle this, uh, this, uh, this case of multiple executions oh, at different bind variable value. Okay. Oh. 
No idea. Oh, okay. Whether it's uh, it's relevant or not. Oh, okay. We will see in the future. Yeah. Uh, also, we have greetings from Andep Penedo and uh, Montazar uh, from the presentation on YouTube channel. Yes. Thank you. So, any other question? Any other question? We still have five minutes to question yes. Mr. Mohamed Uri. <laughs> Uh, was it clear for everyone? I think so. Yeah, the, uh, in the chat, there is one guy. Uh, th thank you for the rocket science knowledge. Okay, you are welcome. <laughs> yes, there is a lot of uh, people uh, Thank you for the presentation on the chat right now. Yes. You can follow up uh, later on. We from uh, Lux OG uh, want to say thank you as well for you and for people uh, joining us today. Uh, in a couple of minutes, we will have Evie Havikuma with a presentation about Oracle Sharding. Okay. Uh, you want me to, to stay five minutes? Uh, no problem. Huh? Oh, if, if you want to stay, stay with us. It's good. If somebody else, uh, maybe there is a uh, left. left no, I, I, I am keeping until. Uh, <laughs> until uh, okay. And just, uh, and just yeah. remind people that there is uh, more fun after your presentation. We got a lot of fun and uh, deep knowledge on SQL stuff. Yeah, if if uh, if uh, you receive question after this uh, presentation, mm -hmm. I uh, you can send it to me and I will try to do my best to answer. Yes. Also, we we um, ask the the speakers to deliver the the yes I will presentations yeah. to us. We will um, put those available on the Lux OG portal. Yes, I will. Download. I will. Yes. Yeah, Dimitri is also thank you on the chat. Any more questions, Andrea, on YouTube? No, no questions. Okay. Okay. Oh, um, 